Hey guys, Travis McGee with M Grills, and today we got a special little video for you. We are gonna take apart our stainless steel M16s. We're gonna talk about this grill for a minute, and then we are going to completely strip them down, refinish them, and make them look brand new again. Uh, a really an awesome benefit of having a stainless steel grill. So we're gonna show you how to do it. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Quick, let's just talk about what we're gonna need. We're gonna need, I just have a wet sponge here, you know, just something that's damp. Uh, I got a dry cloth, I got another raggedy dry cloth here. Uh, when we do take it apart, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver. This is a number, a 10 millimeter little socket wrench, or if you just have a little adjustable wrench, that works just fine too. Uh, and our red scotch bright pads that we talked in the, uh, uh, when we refinished the C4 portable grill. Uh, these red scotch Bright pads are awesome. You could nicely get a, 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 a good grain back into your stainless. Um, they just polish extremely well. So we're not using any chemicals. There's no grill cleaner or anything we're using. We're strictly using some water uh, and scotch Bright pads. So um, I kind of already started to take this grill apart. And I stopped myself because I said, hey, this would be a great video to show. Because uh, occasionally I do like to take apart my grills and clean them very well, especially bringing them out to uh, competitions and such. You just want to represent and have your stuff looking really nice. Um, that's a huge benefit of having a stainless steel grill is that you could strip it down and make them look very nice. Um, so let's just get to it. First, I'm gonna take the lid off. And the M16s. You know, the lids slide right off the base, very easy. The only thing I did here was I took, I've already taken apart my, the stainless steel lid straps. So, and this is four uh, bolts in each strap. The whole purpose of these straps is uh, when I designed these suckers, I was like, hey, um, since you do slide your lid off the base, there's not a lot to hold on to, and if the grill is hot, you know, you can put your hands in here, but if the grill's hot, that's a bad idea. Uh, the last thing you wanna do is touch your lid. So having these straps here turn your lid, you basically got a handle now to hold on to, and they always stay cool. So even though your lid can be really hot, it's not hot up here, so you can grab it, take your lid off, and go and set it to the side, let it cool off uh, before you go and transport your grill home. So um, that's the whole purpose of these. Some guys out there, if you don't even want these on the grill, you could take your bolts, put them back in the holes, and then you don't even have lip straps on them. So that's just something you could do if you like. But um, personally, uh, being able to break the grill down and throw it in a truck or whatever, I really like these lid straps. We also make um, these leather, uh, basically it's, like a, it's a leather, uh, strap that goes on the strap and uh, it has some buttons in it and you snap it around or snap oh wait a minute I do have some where are mine ha ha here they are hold on so basically um, here they are, my lid straps. So, uh, and I do make these as well. So, and they just snap on like so. And so now when you're, you just have a little extra hand protection um, if you just don't want to grab the metal. Gloves work fine. You know, we don't sell a whole ton of these, but you know, occasionally we do. Um, but it is another way just to protect your hands. If you're storing the grill outside, I recommend taking these off and storing them somewhere else because you know the, the leather can get weathered. So um, I pretty much I would put these on when I'm using the grill. So that's that. Put those to the side. Um, this grill, as you can see, uh, this is it's not. I mean, it's not in too bad a shape. It's not too extremely dirty. Now, looking at the base, 
The base to me is pretty dirty, but we're gonna go ahead just so everything matches and looks nice. We're gonna polish this up. I did already take the Scotch Brite here and, and polish these up, and when you do, everything's in the same motion. You know, you don't wanna scrape this way and that way because you wanna have a nice grain that you're putting back in. So, actually, we'll just start with those. Put that lid side there. I like to lay these on a flat surface. And that's about it. And now, I don't know if you can see, but now it has a nice pretty green back in it. Uh, these were kind of dingy and yellow. Already went through all this, but you know, you can make it look really nice and virtually brand new again. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Let me go over this one. Set that to the side, looks really nice. You know, if you're doing all this here, you know, you just kind of go over it like this that around the edges and you're good to go you wipe your fingerprints off of it okay now let's take our lid I'm gonna go ahead and take the thermostat out and that's just a wing nut so very easy to remove the tell truth thermometer Let's take that out, put that to the side. Okay, could take the handle off. Uh, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I really need to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the damper covers on the side though. And those are always just finger tight, so it doesn't take much to get these off. And that's just a bolt. You do have a spring in your nut. So let's put that to the side. And do the same thing to the other. Okay. So there we are. So all I'm doing, I'm gonna take a wet sponge or rag. I'm just wiping this off, just get some of this dirt off of it. And dry it off here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the grain. The grain in the stainless does run this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scotch Bright pad, lay it here, put a little pressure on it, and just go back and forth. done take your clean rag wipe it down and there you go so that has a beautiful finish back in it it's super clean and you just kind of work your way around every panel and do the same thing so with this one same thing I'm gonna follow the grain.
that looks good. Yeah. One panel. Panel's done. I'm gonna do along here. We'll do the back. If your hinges are dirty, the hinges are stainless steel as well. So you could do the same thing with the hinges. But um, I mean, this looks really good. I mean, it looks brand new. Okay, and let's put this to the side. Let's clean up our mess a little bit. Okay, now for the base. Take my grates out. Take out the basket. The ash pan. And that's it. Let me spin this around. Now, as you can see, the base is a lot dirtier than the top. And it's almost, you know, it's changing colors a little bit from the stainless, just getting hot. To the hurting thing, it's just like stainless exhaust tips. After a while, the, uh, the heat will just start discoloring the stainless. And I've actually had an M16 at the shop when we did a lot of testing on, and we got that thing uh, almost purple from just getting it really hot which is actually it's pretty cool 
And then, uh, so in this one, we're gonna take out our, the two dampers on the bottom. And then when we're all done, we'll polish these up too. I'm gonna leave the handles on. I'm leaving the lid stops. I'm pretty much gonna leave all this, the bolts in it, I'm gonna leave it. So I'm gonna take my little sponge. Let's, let's first try to clean it up as best as we can. This is a good way to get any kind of uh, caked, uh, caked on grease or anything like that. Sometimes it's just hard. It's always best uh, if you get grease on your grill, wipe it off immediately before it cools. From my experiences of the, any time of getting grease on any grill, if you see it, immediately wipe it off. When it dries, it hardens up. Okay. That, 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 now. Okay, I'm gonna start with the lip here. See if you can see the shine. Still got some ash in here. I should dump out, but let's try to dump this out. Okay, that's good here to this side.
don't know if you can see that difference. Look at that, compared to this other one. So it's a little more dingier, yellow, it's just dirty. Uh, a lot of this stuff, it just won't come off with a good cleaner. You just have to scrape it off. Big difference. Now for the front. Make sure you guys can see this. So the front, we got, you know, a bunch of hard grease that's on there. Bit of a yellow tint to it. Since I'm now starting the front, get a different Scotch Bright pad. See if you can see that difference. See that difference? It's a brand new grill. So as I was saying, that's the benefits, one of the benefits of uh, stainless. These, this, uh, the M16s are 316 stainless, 12 gauge thick. So 12 gauge, that's a hundred thousandths of an inch thick, so slightly under an eighth of an inch. Um, but still, that's very thick stainless. Um, that's why a lot of people, you know, they don't realize these things cost, the material alone in the M16 just cost a lot. And they're not mass produced. So everyone, we cut them, we cut all the material on a water jet and or a laser and then we uh, we bend all the form we, we bend the form on a CNC press brake and then we hand TIG weld the entire grill together so this is all hand TIG welded it's not spot welded uh, 
I mean, the craftsmanship is, for a grill like this, you're not gonna find it. Nobody does this. So, um, but the greatest stainless, this being 316 stainless, uh, basically that's a marine grade stainless. So it's gonna hold up really, really well in your salt water environments compared to 304. 316 stainless has less alloy in it. So um, it's a lot less prone to rust over time. Even 304 stainless can rust, but over a long period of time, because it does have more alloy on it. But, um, Three sixteen has less alloy, but so it's going to hold up uh, in those saltwater coastal environments much better. All right, looks good. Let's get the back. And I say we're about done. off our surface. Okay. Let's polish our vent covers. see the difference where that was you know dingier it's kind of it's changed colors it's yellow now it's bright has a fresh grain in it looks brand new I just went inside washed my hands so we can assemble let's start with the bottom dampers and as I reassemble these like the bolt heads I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of brush them off a little bit make them look New. Well, don't drop stuff. Bolt goes on the outside. And you have your spring. And then you have the nut.
Okay, you don't have to go to this extent with cleaning your grills, but for me, uh, especially, you know, if we're gonna do the, you know, steak cook-offs and competition grilling and, you know, it's like, it's like going into a, a racetrack with your car. It's like, you're not gonna show up at a racetrack with a dirty car. Uh, same with this, this is your tool where you're, as a race car driver, your car is your tool. Well, this is your tool when you're competing with. So you wanna take care of it, keep them clean. Let them, make them last. Okay, I'm gonna put the base over here. We are done with this. Ash pan. Charcoal basket. Now let's get the lid. There it is. This lid looks beautiful. Put the thermostat in. Yeah, I had a conversation the other day about cleaning your grills. And I was explaining to a guy, because he was a big gun nut. Kind of like me. And I was talking to him, I was like, you know, when you go out and go shoot your grill, every time you shoot, do you clean your grill? I mean, I'm sorry, do you clean your gun? Uh, he was like, yeah, of course. I was like, okay, well, Treat your grills the same way. I don't do it after every single time I cook in it. Like I don't clean my guns every single time I shoot. But occasionally I do like to just strip everything down and get everything a nice cleanse. So he was like, oh, it made sense to him. So um, sometimes you just gotta, you know, when you're when you're spending like a thousand dollars on a grill, to me, it's like you want to make this thing. You want it, it, it better last a long time. It better be able to stay looking good for a long time. So, at least that's, that's my thought. And if I had a grill, <clears throat> excuse me, if, I have, if my grill was painted, we used to do, we used to have the black M16s, which we now only offer them in stainless. But the black M16s, what I would do is the exact same thing we did here, except instead of scr uh, scrubbing it with Scotch-Brite, I would clean them off really good, strip them down, probably even strip them down a little further by removing the handles, removing the hinges. Uh, and then I would go as far as, uh, complete just repainting them if your paint's fading or, or anything because these grills they are designed to get really hot and even a 1200 degree paint just sometimes doesn't hold up very well after a few cooks in it uh, so I would strip it the same way and just repaint it lid straps on take our bolt heads Now we have, and these are all stainless steel. All, every nut and bolt we put on our grills are stainless steel. We don't do anything nickel plated or, or just mild steel as far as like nuts and bolts and handles. All of our handles are stainless. And that's just because we don't want to be like everybody else. But the story behind the SM16 is um, with Roland. 
of Poncho and Lefty Steaks. Thank you. I'm gonna put this one on too. So Roland of Poncho and Lefty Steaks, uh, brand ambassador of ours. Love the guys, uh, both Justin and Roland. Man, they're, they have been extremely awesome. Um, but uh, they are the 2016 World Steak Cook-Off Champions. If you're not familiar with them, uh, if you're in the steak world, uh, everybody knows them. Um, but when Roland, he, he called me up one day and you know he introduced himself and you know he wanted to come by the shop and, and check out our grills. So I was like, man, by all means, come over. So I took him on a tour and then he was looking at the M1 and the B2. And um, he was looking at those grills saying, you know, these would be awesome for the steak competitions because you got that adjustable rack. And, um, but, but his whole, you know, the main thing was about getting hot. Like, were they going to get hot enough? And I was like, yeah, they'll definitely get hot. But it came to where, you know, he was trying them out. <clears throat> and then I went to my first steak competition that they were at. And um, when I went and I saw what everybody was cooking on, and I was like, man, these, the M1 and the B2, I mean, those are legitimately, they're pretty much their overkill. And so when I saw what everybody's cooking on, I was like, hey, what if we designed, like if, if you came up with your design for like the ideal perfect state competition grill, uh, let's come together, put our heads together. Let's, um, you know, you come out with the design of this grill. I'll look at, obviously on, you know, we'll kind of put our, you know, we'll, the build quality into it. And so it was like within a day, I think he sent me over um, a drawing that he's been working on of like his of his uh, per ideal perfect grill, and then you know it was it was basically it was this shape, and um, so we played around with it. We built a prototype. Uh, we made some changes with the airflow, and to where he was like, "This is it. This is perfect." So that's how this grill came along. Is we had the 2016 state champion say, you know, what is your perfect grill? Like what is the, you know, we're not talking about a grill that was, you know, made in 30 years ago that people just adapt to grilling with or whatever. It's like, let's, let's come up with something now for competition. Uh, what would that be? So being able, number one, to control your heat uh, was, probably the number one thing about it the, the the issue was you have to control your heat it has to be able to get really hot um, you know having a size you know it's got to run grill grates in it um, and little stuff like you know when he kind of sent me the shape and then we start building it and then as far as like an aesthetic stuff you know the name like an aesthetic it was you know that was Kind of the parts that I worked on and you know that was really it that was that was how the M16 came about you know, since then we you know obviously we have other grills we have the little C4 portable grill which is an awesome uh, state very capable state competition grill but this from the ground up the M16 was designed to be the ultimate pretty much the best of the best competition, state competition grills. Um, but there you go. I mean, as you can see, this grill looks brand new and it was pretty rough looking. I've seen, I've had a lot rougher, but I've still been able to polish them up to look just like this every single time. So with a slid, Looks brand new. Hey, that's it guys. Uh, it's not hard, it's really easy, and you don't know chemicals. All you need is a little bit of water, 
these red scotch bright pads which I'll leave in the uh, description of where you could purchase these and some elbow grease and that's it uh, keep your grills looking good and uh, hey as always we appreciate you guys and uh, yeah thank you stay tuned make sure you like and subscribe because we plan on coming out with a lot of new content uh, so uh, you know help us out we appreciate y'all thank you